Hello everybody out there. This is Bo from Bo Not Broken and this is The Daily Bend. And I am, um, I think I'm more excited. I'm way more excited than she is. I'm um, excited. This is great. <laughs> she, she just found out it's live too. It's Charlene's live. with us. And um, I told him in a little bit of a prequel, I, I said, you know, 1985 you became Miss America, right? Yeah. Technically, it was September 1984, but I was okay. 85 Miss America. So okay, and you were the first. You were the first bilingual, right? Bilingual, foreign born. Foreign born, yes. Now there's another bilingual gal. How about that? I know she speaks Russian. She's really cool. Um, how much of that? I mean, how much of that? I know it was a little ways away. It was when I was playing college football and <laughs> getting so drafted and all that stuff. <laughs> um, but you know, just quickly tell us what that meant and then kind of how that helped helped or didn't help your life you know it's a, it's a good question because i you don't know you don't uh -huh. know if that was a defining turning point i think it is uh -huh. because it was so unusual and i was only 20 years old right and when you're 20 years old and you're thrust out into the public eye and every single day, you're doing really grown-up things like four-hour dinners. Oh, four-hour dinners. <laughs> fancy places, and you're going, no, I just want to hamburger. What is this? <laughs> what, was it, what was it that got you to get involved in that? Was it someone that said, hey, you've got to, you're beautiful, talented, you got to you know, do this? It was my I mean, mom. Was my it mom. really? Yeah, so I had already won some cash scholarship in a mm -hmm. program called the America's Junior Miss program, okay. which was just for seniors in high school. And I, I remember that. Fifteen thousand dollars in cash scholarship. That goes a long way. Sure. And when it can pay for books and classes and and room and board and everything, you go, whoa, this is a good deal. Well, Miss right. America is one of the largest, if not the, I think it's now the largest scholarship program for women in the world. Oh wow, that's a big wow. deal. And it's wow. cash scholarship. So anyway, so my mom was like, hey, you did well with that one. Why don't you try? I see this little ad for Miss Salt Lake Valley for Miss America. You could do that. My first response was. Eh, they do swimsuit. I'm not doing <laughs> And mom says, you have a 50% talent. Okay, well, you know, and Utah was the only state at the time that did swimsuit private. It was not done oh, on in stage. like another room? Yeah, it was oh, done oh. in the afternoon, you know, and we did it. You know, no men. No, no, I'm just kidding. It was kidding. just the judges and the, you know, and all of us contestants, but they didn't, it wasn't on stage. Wow. And next thing I know, I'm on national television. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dang, that did not work. Like I Heels. <laughs> Haven't walked in those for a yeah, while in a, in a swimsuit. That's yeah. so weird. Yeah. Well, that's, that's awesome because I think, you know, what, what gets us into some of those things is sometimes not even our own, but then when uh -uh. we get into them, the competition. It's an accident. In fact, I've been learning more and more about the accidental opportunities that we have in life. Right. And it's just kind of, do we, do we just grab it? Do we grab what's in front of us? Um, even though it's not planned, and mm -hmm. in fact, most of my life is completely unplanned. Mm -hmm. Even though I have in my mind, this is what I want, Oh, but that's something different. Well, let's change that for a little bit. Are we, so is the question, are we ready for those opportunities? Exactly. You have to be willing to just grab it. Mm -hmm. And it might not work, and that's okay too. Mm -hmm. That's okay if it doesn't work, if you totally fail, you crash and burn, you're embarrassed, that's okay. That's part of the problem that most people have a problem with, is that they're not okay with failing. Right. And so they let it take them down into this whirlpool, True. and they get drowned. You know. but, but if you get okay with failing, then it's just a stepping stone. Then it's just something I learned from. Then it's just it's just part of the success process is failing. So we can only assume you've failed <laughs> and you've won. So many times I tell I, people that you know all what? the time, and I totally forget about it. Right. So when people say, right. "Tell me all the times you failed," and I go, "I know there's more than I can count," and I've tried to forget about them because I just kind of move on. Right. But I've tried out for so many different things. I tried out for all the school musicals, never got a part. Oh, wow. But I was always in the background, and I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed just mm -hmm. being part of it. Mm -hmm. And you can do that when you volunteer. You're part of it. Mm -hmm. You can do that in so many different ways just to be part of something bigger than yourself. And that's okay. You don't have to be the star. You don't have to be out front. Thank you for that. True, true to my heart. Uh, you went into broadcasting. You went into you. you <laughs> that was an accident. That's and you had to be one of the first women to do that, right? I was, I was the third woman at ESPN on air. Okay. Because this was back in nineteen eighties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, ESPN at the time had only been on air eight years. Right. So, in fact, I co-hosted. It was so cool. The ten-year anniversary for ESPN. 
That was what nice. kind of comments were you? What kind of co weird comments oh. were you getting? Everything from, oh, she's just a blonde. She doesn't yeah. know anything yeah. about that. The only reason she's down on the sideline is because she's, she's Miss America. Uh -huh. And I go, well, actually, probably. I remember <laughs> that. I do remember that. Um, that's funny. Uh, but any, any other? Uh, what did that teach you? Was that something that you know taught you a lot as yes. well? Yes. Here's what it taught me. I can figure out anything, hmm. as long as I have enough time and patience. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I did not play football. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it looks like inside a helmet. <laughs> I did not grow up learning those things. Right. But I spent, I would watch every Monday night football like twice because I'd, re, I'd rewind it. Right. I would write down every question, ask but my you know friends the questions. But you know competition. And you know discipline but I didn't know and what the X's it takes. And O's. No. So but. you know, I needed to know the game. And I would mm -hmm. spend hours with the defensive and offensive coordinators at BYU every single wow. week so that I could understand what they were doing. So by the end of the season, I thought I had figured out football. Mm -hmm. And by the end of three years and by the end of eight years, I was getting pretty good at it. Wow. And so here, I knew nothing about football, just like what I'm doing right now with the military. I knew nothing about the military. I'd never even been on base before I started working with the military. I just figured, you know what? I can learn. So do you know more than the hubby? No. <laughs> Is he, he a jock football. guy? Oh, he's he a jock. Football. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a jock. No, so. I still but know. but what a, what a great thing is to have your wife. You can actually understand what's going on. I know. And That's I awesome. Love it. And I and and you know going back to your earlier thought, um, I I really enjoy the nuances of competition mm -hmm. on and off the field. Mm -hmm. um, competition against yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and and how do um, athletes react when they fail? Mm -hmm. How do they react when they win? How do they make it um, help them push forward. Mm -hmm. So I thought all those little things and I love learning about each different athlete. So that's really where my niche um, kind of turned into was getting to know the athletes and what makes them tick mm -hmm. and how does that affect the game, mm -hmm. you know, the bigger picture game. That's great. So that's I awesome. really enjoyed that part. That's really neat. Married for a long time, children, uh, Four kids. Yeah, and tell us, you know, I, I know we, we did that really quick, and I don't want to be here forever and, and bug you forever. <laughs> oh, why not? <laughs> um, after that, you got into a lot of different things, business, um, and, you know, into where you are now. Yeah. Um, what, what, you know, through your transitions, what have you learned? Kind of, you know, because you've done pretty much a lot of things there, that people haven't had the chapters. opportunity. There's just chapters in life. And... And now, especially looking back, I go, okay, that was that chapter and this mm -hmm. chapter. And, you know, the first seven years that I was working at ESPN, I was really struggling towards the latter part of that seven years full when I was on full time with my two new children, my little babies. Mm -hmm. And then I decided, okay, I need to just go freelance and I need to focus on my number one priority being mom. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I was juggling and balancing right. a bunch of other things too. And every now and then, those were in conflict. My, mm -hmm. my top priority being mom, but mm -hmm. yet other things have to get done. So I did another nine years freelance with ESPN. And then I decided, you know what? I want to go back to school. So then I got my master's. At the U? At the U. At the U. While, so when my baby was So you in, went to BYU for undergrad. Right. And, and then when my baby was in preschool, when he started going to preschool, I started taking one class a semester. It took me five years to get my master's. Five years, <laughs> wow. because wow. I finished it up when he was in all day school. Oh, so okay. once he hit first grade, then I finished it up. And at that point, all my kids are in school, and I go, okay, now what do I want to do? And I, I really did not, I did not want to be in front of the camera anymore. Yeah, you know, I, I really wanted to be in business, and that mm -hmm. was kind of my um, original plan when I was much younger. Anyway, it was mm -hmm. never television. So um, this is this is kind of where I landed, and and I I loved it. I'm. I'm more at home in this kind of environment than probably anything else I've done. Wow, well, that's awesome. Real quick, I, I wanted to touch on your book and talk about talk about traveling outside the comfort zones. And oh, yeah. I'm always I'm pointing <laughs> at the camera because I'm always on people <laughs> every day uh, for you know traveling outside of comfort zones, self esteem. Uh, we talk a lot about depression. We try and motivate each other to to reach out to talk to people because depression and it, it's a real thing it, it happens to people it happens to all kinds of people would you just kind of talk about what your kind of your thoughts have been you know over the last while you know um and i do understand um the challenges out there that so many people face and 
and the older I get, the more people I meet with those challenges, mm -hmm. and the more I'm able to engage and, and learn more. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I know a whole lot more about it than, than I did 30 years ago. Um, and especially when I wrote my book about 15 years ago, even then, I know, I, I, I feel like I can empathize even a lot more. Right. Um, but a comfort zone is a living thing. Some people think that once you've left your comfort zone, ah, you're good, you're good, you know, you've, you've figured out how to just constantly engage. And it's something that you have to work on every day, especially if you are an introvert. Um, and I think a lot of people are more introverted mm -hmm. than they think they are. Mm -hmm. right. And they would prefer to just kind of have their barriers up and they're right. good to go and stuff. And, and um, so once you kind of figure out that's something that you can learn and that you can work on, and you just have to push it every day, every day. And the more you push it, the bigger it gets, mm -hmm. the bigger your comfort zone grows. Mm -hmm. And um, so every, every person has a different story and has a different um, place that they came from right. and a different lens that they look at life right. uh, because of their own experiences. And so that is key to taking everything into consideration. So I can't ever pretend to say, I know how to fix you. I know how to tell you how, to, how you can fix this because everybody has their, their own place that they came from and their right. own challenges and some are extraordinarily difficult. Right. And you start finding out their stories and you just go, how did you even get here? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and I, see, I see people who have extreme challenges as people who are constantly on a rocky path, um, climbing up a mountain, and sometimes they fall off the path and then they gotta struggle to get back up the path. And those people who are climbing on that, I just am constantly going, wow, you guys are my heroes. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like sometimes for a vast majority of my life, I've just been on a, a just a pathway that I have to, I'll get off sometimes and stuff, but I haven't had the mountains that some people have. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing when they can even just pull themselves back to a mm -hmm. starting point and go, okay, now what, now what? I'm gonna regroup. But all of us, all of us have to figure out how to get out of our comfort zones because I think most of us do have some kind of a comfort zone. Very rarely have I met somebody who doesn't have any kind of a comfort zone. Right. You know? well, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I might have a criminal mind if that's the, that's right, the case. Right, exactly. I mean, you know, you're psychopaths, you're the psychopaths. psychopaths are yeah. going to have no yeah. boundaries yeah, and just, yeah. you know. Craziness. Right. Then it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Really weird. Well, thank you for that because I, you know, there's a, we can help people. I mean, we can help people identify some of the things that, mm -hmm. that they may want to work on or may, but really it ultimately comes to us. It and, really does. And, but, but it, but it's, I think it's incumbent upon us, meaning those looking to help others is to really kind of unconditionally. That's really the look word, at, unconditionally. Yeah. You are so right. And non-judgmental. Right. Right. Because everybody comes from a different place. Yeah. And you can't just say, oh, well, I know what's wrong. Right. I know how to fix it. Right, exactly. But I, but I can be here and say, you know what? You have every right to have that pain. You sure. have every right to sure. be feeling down and like a total failure, but but I know you can do more. I can right. know you can do better. Right. Let's switch gears. Let's switch gears. Thank okay. you for all of that. I know it's kind of hard sometimes to fit all that in, but thank you. We're... Um, we're at Story Rock, right? Yes, yeah, Story We're Rock, at Story the Rock Company. It's a technology company, company in Salt Lake. And tell everybody what you've been doing for, I mean, what, a, what an amazing yeah, thing years. this is. Thank you, 12 years. Yeah, so I've been here 12 years. It's my office. You're looking at a Yeah, uh, of my maybe office. I'll pan around this if, is if my I get a Kentucky chance Kentucky Derby. So I interviewed Tony Bennett at the Kentucky Derby. Tony Bennett, Tony I love Tony Bennett is a painter, too. Did you oh hear gosh, him wail at his 90th? Isn't he amazing? I couldn't I believe the voice. I love that guy. So I, I asked him to sign, anyway. sign oh, that's my awesome. print of his painting. So oh, that's awesome. my Kentucky Derby. And that's the Olympics from Behind 2002. Okay. I was a volunteer doing Olympics. I'll so pan around here, so, too. You yeah, got, it's just You've got Muhammad Ali. Pictures, you've got everybody up there. Up there. Um, but anyway, so I've been here 12 years, and I run the Remember My Service Productions division of Story Rock. And, um, and really, we kind of got pulled in to helping the military to tell their story. This was back in 2005. Oh, okay. Um, when, because uh, our specialty at Story Rock is telling the story. Mm -hmm. We we are uh, we have digital content management technology, 
In fact, we started the digital scrapbooking category. Oh, wow. Um, MyMemories.com mm -hmm. is the place where people can go and get the right scrap. It's, it's really good digital scrapbooking. It's not just I'm putting a picture on a white page and turning it into a book. Right. So, anyway, um, so we got asked by uh, a local um, commanding general of the 96th Regional Readiness Command of the Army Reserve. He says, I need help telling our story. I want. I know that my public affairs officer and my historians they're gathering a lot of content because in 2005 digital content was starting to explode, right? right? right. So now we're gathering more stuff than ever before, right. photos and videos. What do I do with it? How do I pull it together and make sense of it and tell a story? Because I want my soldiers to know what they had done outside of just their one little lane. How I want cool. them to know what we did together. Yeah, how cool. And it builds unit morale. Yeah. It builds esprit de corps and pride and let alone preserving their legacies. So right. we started doing that and it's just exploded to the point now where we work with, uh, we worked with the Department of Defense on the Korean War 60th commemoration. We did a full book and documentary, it was in the GI Film Festival. I have another documentary in the GI Film Festival next week actually in Washington DC, which was the documentary we did for Desert Storm 25th commemoration. It's wow. called The Liberation of Kuwait. Right. Um, in fact, we did a, we did a book as well. So this is this these is the books book. are are you know those book. beautiful coffee table type. And then we put the documentary book. in the back. Okay. And so far, fifty thousand veterans of Desert Storm have received this as a gift from the people of Kuwait. Oh. We're anticipating another. So as a gift, they didn't have to pay gift, for it. As a gift, it's wow. a, yeah. Um, we're anticipating another two three hundred thousand copies to be right. able to give to veterans of that of that war. This one also, we're in the process, this is Vietnam 50th commemoration, um, which we're right in the peak year of the Vietnam 50th. That's right. And this, we're working the with all the states. The war that everybody, <laughs> you know, not everybody forgets, but oh it's my unfortunate gosh. Well, how. The, the veterans that came home from that war got the double whammy. Not yeah, only they did, did they get the post-traumatic stress from being in combat, being on the front lines, but they came home to a country who didn't care about them. They right. did not have the support like today's troops. Today's right. troops, we love them, you know? Right. We separate troops from war today. We did True. not back then. True. Back then, if you were in uniform, you were part of the problem. Yeah. And you can't yeah. treat those who are in uniform In any that way. uniform. <laughs> no. So this is the Utah edition, okay. which means every state's getting their own edition. So it's individualized to the troops to that that were here from Utah in Vietnam. Yes, in the forward section. Wow, so that's the forward really cool. section has the message from the governor. And then the bulk of it, these are stories of service, duty, and sacrifice that we collected. We, we did all sorts of research from the Library of Congress Veterans History Project. Pull that together. These are the coolest stories. How long does it, not to stop, oh, how like does it take? Yeah. <laughs> so it takes yeah. quite a while to just kind of... It took us a year of doing research and writing. And then the forward section part is, is um, customized per state. So right after the White House message, then it's the governor's message. You know, right got there. Gary right there. Yep. Got yep. Gary going Gary on Herbert there. there. The first. And then we go in, and, and it's all about the Utah veterans. Right. You know? So then that's what we're doing. We just barely went to print on Iowa, on Hawaii. Uh, Mississippi's about to go to print. We're anticipating um, most, if not all, and the a states. lot of it is funded by sponsors. Sponsors. And, and it depends and on the state. Some states they actually have some state funds bit of allocated. For it. Yeah. Utah did half and half, half public, half private. Um, they were able to do that. You know, Utah's been doing very well. Um, Iowa, it was all state funds. They have a license plate fund that mm -hmm. they could uh, be able to use for this. Um, Hawaii was private. Uh, Mississippi is, I think, a little bit of both. So right. every every state kind of has a different way. Texas is pulling together all private sponsors, for instance. Oh wow! So yeah, wow. it's it's just it's really awesome to be able to bring in the private. And you have it even all the way down to maybe a battle or a or a, a mission, uh, maybe or, a, and, and a six a month unit. or a yes. or a you know a call up kind of. In a fact, thing. can I leave and go grab one? Of course, one? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I want to make sure we're that just we're, we're live here. So, yes, we right. are. So. We did. Oh, I didn't. Thanks for this. joining us, everybody. We're we're on the daily bend here with nice. Charlene, and and yeah, we're just kind of raw, in. and we're just doing it. And this is the USS America, for instance, oh, wow. an amphibious assault ship. Okay. Very cool ship, and we worked on their deployment. So there's oh, their commanding yeah. officer. Every single sa sailor is in here. Yeah, it's just like a year. It's just it's like, a, like a yearbook. A yearbook. The Navy situational does a book. really good job preserving their history for over a hundred years. Every time their ship leaves the pier, they do a book. Oh, wow. So they, they really do it well. Wow. This is the Army National Guard, the Utah Army National Guard. Okay. Every one of their 5,500 soldiers received a copy thanks to sponsors. So, and what we do, we don't do ads in here. 
We we allow <laughs> the sponsors. Chilies. I know. Chilies no in the book. Yeah. We allow the sponsors to write messages that's, of gratitude. Oh wow. And that's, that's it. great. Messages of gratitude. We love that's you great. people. So that's great. Thanks. Good. There we are. We're back. Uh, what? Obviously, this is a labor of. It, it's you've probably found it to be a labor of love. What have you learned? Oh, yeah, and, yeah. You know um, what? Uh, what? Here's what I've I've realized is that I get passionate about things that are meaningful. And um, telling the story of those who serve in our defense and preserve our liberties and our way of life, that to me is really meaningful. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I can get really passionate about it. I realize that I cannot get passionate about selling widgets. <laughs> <laughs> widgets? I can't, I can't either. do that. I can't no. either. So even though you know other opportunities right. come along, I, I really, really enjoy this this mission. I, it feels like a mission, even though we're technically for profit, because you can't go from for profit to non profit. I'd love to be non profit. Sure. Our board keeps thinking that I think it's a non profit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. Because I try well, to you know, keep the prizes down. No, yeah, we have to but, make a profit. <laughs> yeah, but I, I know, you know, such a great, I know it is, you got to make a little profit, but obviously <laughs> some of them are it getting totally it for no like, cost. Well, you know. the soldiers themselves, the service right. members themselves, we don't want them to pay for it. So they, that's why we find the sponsors. Any efforts that, thanks for sharing all of that. And again, you, do you guys have... Well, you probably have a website, but it's for yeah. you know people so to. So uh, remembermyservice.com. Remembermyservice.com. For the okay. Vietnam one, it's vietnam50gift.com. Okay. I would love people to go to that one. Vietnam50. So do you have a yeah? You have kind of a, yeah. a website for each one of the each efforts. Each one has each one it. One I mean, the... from our main website, you can link in, but like koreareborn.org is the Korean 60th uh, Liberation of Kuwait. Mm -hmm. dot or dot org, I think it's dot com. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so but from our main website. Any things that you've done over the years that have really, you know, non -pro or been a part of any efforts, you know, as it relates to the military, anything that really just kind of hit home for you? Any experiences um, that? So you know what has really tied my experience when I was twenty is nine years ago I started a program at Miss America um, where I bring wives or moms of fallen heroes to Miss America and for five days, fully sponsored flights, you know, lodging, meals, spa, salon, everything, wow. we treat them like royalty. Right. And then it all culminates, and there, there's about 15 of them that come, different group every year, and it all culminates the night of Miss America, right before the broadcast, we have a formal ceremony on the big stage with all the former Miss Americas, and there's usually 30 of them there. Mm -hmm. And I bring guests from the Pentagon, and we have a formal ceremony to make them honorary Miss Americas. Wow. And it's really cool. And we have, a, we do about 30 seconds on each one of their loved ones that, you know, in the last couple of years we've done moms and mm -hmm. I would have to say that's the hardest one. Wow. That's I the bet. hardest one to I go bet. through 15 of those moms who have each lost a son. You know, and in one case we had one that had lost a daughter. Wow. Yeah, so it's, that one's really meaningful and, and I love being able to do something with my, you know, my past, Miss mm -hmm. America and something mm -hmm. that they really enjoy. We're right. in Atlantic City and we just make it about fun. Right. At first when we first uh, And you don't have to wear your swimsuit. I do not. Just a little humor never there. Never again. <laughs> um, except in Cancun. Except um, in Cancun. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's been really great to put that to good use because right. these women really enjoy it. And, and we keep it about fun. We don't, and the bonds that they make being able to talk to somebody who has been exactly through what they've been through. Right. They just, I remember sitting in between, this was the first night that a first group had come in and we were just kind of all getting together. And I had, this time we had, um, yeah, we had some moms and they're all sitting around. They start talking and they were comparing notes of, now, now yours is, he's buried in at Arlington and oh, we went over to Arlington and we took the kids over there. And I'm just sitting there going, I, I don't, I don't I think I'd have a dry figure, eye. Uh -uh. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to hold it together, and they're they're feeling like, oh, what was it like when you went to Arlington the first time, or when you went? I'm just, I'm going, oh my. Gosh. I look at pictures of the tomb of the un unknown soldier, and I kind of tear up. Oh that's, yeah. That's how hard it is for me. Oh yeah. Wow. It's really hard. So I've I've enjoyed being able to do something like that, and I know that they've really appreciated and enjoyed it. You've been a rock star. I, I just want to thank you so much for letting me come here. I hope, is there anything you wanted to add? I hope maybe you'll have me back if, 
if, oh, as, the show, as the show grows. This is so easy. No lighting. We I know. Have to do anything. I know. Just set up a little You're, camera. It, it, she was showing me, you know, how what, she's perfect. We're facing but if the you, window for good lighting. In good lighting. If there's ever, you know, as the show grows, if there's ever a chance, I come out. If you're putting out a new, something okay. new, I'd love to come back and, and visit. I appreciate you Absolutely. coming to visit or, in, or me coming to visit on yes. such short notice i mean oh, uh, it was all, it's only been a week um, i appreciate it anything you want to add this is like i said it's raw it's it's no this is time. so great you know i i appreciate everything that you're doing i mean you're you're really making an impact and the more that i'm alive now over half a century um the you're more one, I really... i'm older than you <laughs> no you're not yes i am i'm oh 50, gosh, almost 55 you, <laughs> you look great <laughs> thank you so the the older i get the more i realize that there's so so many different ways to have an impact. Mm -hmm. Now, just because I might be able to do emceeing at something or go on camera to do different things, I still um, find that it matters to have that one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And you can't do a whole lot of one-on-one -on -one because there's sure. only so sure. many hours in the day, right? Sure. You know, and so um, no matter who we are, don't have to be Miss America or anything like that. That. Um, Everybody has an opportunity to just do something, and sometimes it just starts with, "Hey, you doing okay? You know, how about how that? are you? <laughs> how about that? What do I always talk about? That's yeah. exactly what I talk yeah. about. Reach out to somebody you haven't talked to for a while, yeah. or what are just Whether and it's listening. A phone call or just yeah, somebody there, hey, or yeah. listening to them. Mm -hmm. Well, how really? How are you? Uh -huh. Not you know, I'm fine. Everything's great. Yeah. Whatever. People just want to know if they matter. Right, right, and they do, and they do. Yeah. Thank you. Bones, just hey, a bone right there. Know. All right, she she bones. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks everybody for watching, and uh, please like it, share it, and I'll have it up on YouTube, and you can pass it around and all that fun stuff. Charlene, thank you very much, and uh, remember you. that life is all about the bend. I love it.